to our second Trinity U for this season, and we are privileged tonight to be able to have Sam Auger and Tekoa Elledge with us. A little bit of background about um, Sam and Tekoa. Uh, Sam, this is her 10th year um, in education. This is her third year at Trinity, and before Trinity, she worked as a kindergarten teacher for three years at a small Christian school in Reseda. And we've been blessed since, um, well, originally Tekoa came as Tekoa Kovac. Um, <laughs> and now, and since she's been with us, we came to Tekoa Elledge. And the three years that Tekoa has been here, we have had this dynamic duo in first grade. And it has been an incredible blessing for our first grade friends in particular as tonight you will experience as we, with their specific topic of decoding as it relates to learning to read and how you specifically tonight can learn some skills to help your little people. And we're grateful that you're here this evening. Um, this is our first Trinity U for the grammar school component and um, the idea behind Trinity U. You know what, Mr. Rackquist, as the director of Trinity U, would you mind coming up? And sure. Just, Say that with us, yeah. and um, then you want to pray for us. Absolutely. Well? Yeah. Great, thank Absolutely. you. All right. Hi. Um, so the idea behind Trinity is that we want are really excited about what we do here at Trinity, and we know sometimes parents aren't quite sure uh, what's happening in the classroom, <laughs> and so we want to share um, the things that we're excited to teach your students, um, and and share just what the Christian classical world has to offer with parents and even the broader Trinity communities, so grandparents and friends and, and anybody who would like to come. So we're excited about tonight's uh, uh, talk. We're also having another talk uh, in a couple weeks on the 5th, which is about the relationship between science and religion. And we're having one of the most popular uh, upper school teachers, Dr. Phillips, give a talk on that. So you're all invited to come and see that as well. I'm sure you're all going to enjoy what you're here tonight. All right, uh, let me open the prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening that we can gather and hear about how to understand words, this, this powerful ability to speak and communicate and to read. Uh, we pray that this time would be a blessed time. We pray for our speakers tonight, Mrs. Elledge and Mrs. Auger, that you would allow them to speak well and to teach us what we should know to help our children read. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So thank you, Mr. Ramquist, and thank you, Mrs. Cato. Um, we're, I'm Tekoa Elledge, and I've been teaching here at Trinity for uh, six years, and everything we're going to teach you tonight is based on our experience in the classroom in first grade. Yeah. My name is Samantha Auger. This is my third year working here at Trinity, and my third year working here at Tekoa. Yeah. So you're going to get to see a lot of the things that we do in our classroom that we have seen before. Hopefully this will inspire you to maybe even come up with some of your own strategies. And we're going to go pretty quick. You're going to get a whole year of kindergarten and first grade in an hour. <laughs> so the purpose of tonight is to inform the Trinity community of specific decoding skills and phonics rules that are taught in early grammar school. We're going to model some phonics lessons for you that your, the children actually do. And we're going to equip you with some practical exercises and strategies that you can use at home with your child. So what is decoding? Decoding is the process of translating print into speech by rapidly matching a letter or combination of letters. Another name for letters is graphemes. To their sounds, phonemes. Another name for sounds is phonemes. And recognizing the patterns that make syllables and words. So we teach our children syllables. To find a syllable in a word, you have them put their hand on their chin. So go ahead and put your hands on your chin and say the word day. Day. How many times did your chin go down? Show me on your fingers. One. That's because there's one vowel sound in the word day. A-Y is one vowel sound, so it has one syllable. Every syllable has a vowel sound. And before I came to Trinity, I did not know that. I did not know that every vowel went with a syllable. It was eye-opening to me. <laughs> now put your hand on your chin and say the word Planet. Planet. How many times did your chin go down? Two times because there's two vowels. 
A, A, apple, A, E, elephant, S. Now put your hand in your chair one more time. Really silly, first graders together. <laughs> and say December. December. How many times does your chin go down? Three. And that's because there's three vowels in December. Every syllable gets a vowel. And we sing that together. <laughs> I'm going to start us off here in the kindergarten year. Uh, I think a lot of parents would be happy to hear that um, as far as expectations coming in, there are none. Um, our kindergarten teachers do a great job getting the kiddos out of the late sleep and giving them the basics and turning them into really great early readers. So I'm going to show you a couple things that your student will learn in kindergarten that will help them on this reading journey. So the first step in kindergarten is to learn the names and sound letters make. Like everybody, we know what this one's called, right? Great. <laughs> and we know what sound it makes, right? Ah. Great. Well, here at Trinity, we know that students learn in different ways. So we have a great uh, way of showing us letter sounds that um, teach the different types of learners. So I'm going to let Tacoa be my student because I think showing me is going to be the best way. So Tacoa is going to read this letter and she's going to tell me the sound that it makes and a few more things. But I'm also going to use my phonics fingers two fingers like this, and elbow up in the air to, to spell it in the air. A, apple, a. Great. She did a great job. What you saw her do there was read the letter, and she made it in the sky, just again, to see the letter again. Um, we have something called a key word, which for A is apple, helps the students visualize what the letter looks like in a word. And in front of you on your blue paper, that is A through Z. You now have every key word that we use here in our classroom. So study because I might need your help here. <laughs> and of course the last thing is making the sound. And we touch our throats to show that we're doing the sound. So I'm going to give Tacoa another one. This is a vowel. I'll give her a consonant now. B, ba, b. Great. She did another great job. So looking here, we have our vowels on these beautiful salmon colored cards and our consonants on these white cards. And that will come into play later on in your school years too. Um, in kindergarten, after they get a strong sense of what the letter's name is and what sound it makes, they'll start blending them together, putting two sounds together. And Tacoa has a fun poster to show you. So knowing that B says B and B says A, ah, I can look at this and I know to chunk it together and say A. Ah. And then another skill they would work on in kindergarten is reading down the ladder. I would point down the ladder and they have to go a, 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 a. Or now read up the ladder. A, 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 a. And then another skill that can be a little tricky is they want to sound them out separately. Bl, a. But we want them to be able to blend it together quickly. La, le, live, la, la. Okay, now read up the ladder. La, la, li, la, la. Um, so after we have the basic sounds, we start blending them together, we can read what we call CBC words. So over here, a CBC word is consonant, vowel, consonant. So those are simple words like this, like the word map. Can we all read this word together? Yeah. Great. <laughs> so on your slide, you're going to see a few more examples, and the students in kindergarten will be working hard at those, and you'll get to see soon what we pushed them through in first grade. All right, parents, I said I was going to make you work, so here we go. I need, a, I need a great volunteer who wants to try air spelling all by themselves. I'm going to call on somebody. Mrs. Elber! <laughs> I already told her I was going to be that All right, here you go. Ah, great. So now we've got the sound. We're going to encourage her to do all the steps now. So can you please air spell it, too? Sorry. Here you A, apple. Oh, apple. expectations coming in at first grade. Does the student know the names of every letter, capital and lowercase? 
if you show them the card, could they say A and A? They don't necessarily have to know the keywords or the phonics fingers yet, um, but we expect them to be able to know the names and the sounds. We also expect that the student um, can say the sound of each short vowel, a, a, i, a, a, and know the difference between a vowel and a consonant. And the kindergarten teachers do a great job of that. Um, it's important to remember that tonight we are talking about the visual side, reading. We're not talking about spelling. If we were going to have them spell, we would not show them the card, and we'd say, what says s? And then the spelling component, they would have to come up with the letter, s, sun, s. But tonight we're talking about the, the visual side, the reading aspect. We also expect that the student can separate words with two to three phonemes into separate sounds. So for example, the word B has two phonemes, B, E. And we will teach them how to count the sounds on their fingers. So can you sound out B with me? B, E. B, two sounds. Let's do cat. K, A, T, three sounds. Now let's do chip. It. Hmm, that's funny. It's four letters, but there's three sounds. So getting them to see that sometimes the two letters together can make one sound. We play a game in first grade, the letters and sounds game. There's an a, a example of it in the back. But they would pull a picture from a cup. And then they put it into the cup with a two, or a three, or a four to um, make sure we know that they know how many sounds are in the word with the picture on it. So the summer before first grade, um, if you have a kindergartner going into first grade, practical things you can do at home is make flashcards and show it to them and have them tell you the name of the letter and the sound that it makes. Another game you can play with them in the car is the phoneme segmentation game. Give them a word, plant, and have them separate it into sounds. And have them tell you how many sounds that it makes and count it on their fingers. For extra credit, you could do the sound deletion or insertion game. What would it be, Sam, if I took the t out of tag? Ad. <laughs> and what would it be if I replaced the t in tag with a book? Back. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> that in the car, so easy. Okay. So yeah, like Tabor said, in first grade, we use a lot of games. We call them games. Us teachers know they're actually tools. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go through a couple of them right now. Maybe Tabor will help me model a few of them. Um, phoneme deletion, right here. Um, what would be left out? What would be left if the T sound were removed from the word tug, like I just did with tag? Words who are matching, do hog and hat begin with the same sound? So, Tacoa, do um, hog and hat begin with the same sound? Yes. Age, house, huh, great. And then I can even go a step further and ask her, do you know another word with H in it? Him, great job. <laughs> so easy things, no paper, no paper needed. Um, we work on blending a lot, so I might ask her, what word would we have if I put k, at together? Cat, great. <laughs> um, and then phoneme segmentation, which is really hearing each sound. So I'll say, what sounds do you hear in top? And she will tell me, t -op. Great. And another great way to go forward is ask her, what sound did you hear in the middle of the word? Oh, olives, ah. Great job. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, counting the sounds that you hear, um, deleting some sounds that you hear, all these are really great tools. And at the beginning of first grade, we do this a lot in centers during the rotation time that we have. We're playing these games with them, asking them these questions, and getting them to hear the sounds in words. Great. So um, another skill we work on in first grade is something we call nonsense words. These are words that aren't words. They're just silly sounds that we stick together, which is great because it helps the students really focus on the sounds that the letters make rather than trying to guess what they think the text is saying. So I'm going to put a couple on the board and see if you guys can help me out. <laughs> All right, Dakota, random sounds just for you. J if, j very good. So again, at the beginning of first grade, we're sounding every sound out. Later on, she'll be able to do that. Look at these things. <laughs> Another one. Hook, uh, duh, hug. 
Great. This is a fun nonsense word. Liz. <laughs> it's nonsense because it's not capital. They'll get there too. <laughs> and this one could be fun to blend next. So would you read that for us? Was. Hey, wait a minute. That is a real word. It is a real word, but that brings us to the next thing we work on in first grade, which is red flag words. We all know that was is actually spelled W-A-S, but if you were to see it, you would sound it out as WAS. So we talk about nonsense words and, of course, red flag words. The best way to practice red flag words is flashcards. Um, seeing them in the text, pointing them out. We work on these all year long, and one day the kids, they just have it. The more they practice, the more they'll get them. Um, when we're reading new red flag words, we actually have fun tools that we're going to share with you today. I'm going to show you how we learn to read and spell the more we're reading the word because. In my class, we do this. B-E-C-A-U-S-E. -E. <laughs> the kids love it. And then when they see because in the text, all I have to say is B-E, and then they can read the rest. A couple times of that, because is burned into their brain. Tacoa, you have one too, right? Yes, we have a said song. So to know the word said, they would want to spell it as S-E-D, but it's S-A-I-D. I D I D S A I D said said said. <laughs> okay, so we're still in the beginning of first grade, and we start working on blends. Blends at the beginning of the word. There's L lens, bull, coal, full, gold, full, and full. There's R blends. There's S blends, and then there's S blends with three letters at the beginning of a word. And there's a TW blend. Then there's blend at the end of a word. N, n, t, st, and n. And those can be very tricky. That's when the phoneme segmentation game becomes really important. Because if you said, um, please sound out land for me, and they would go, oh, add. Oh, wait a minute. There's another sound in there that's missing because you just said lad. Please do it again. And this time say land, land. So the end lens can be very tricky, but we work on that during our centers, and we keep um, keep keep working at it. We also do um, ladders again, but this time with consonant blends. So I have them. Just recognize the flashcards. Read down the ladder. Read up the ladder. Soldier, her, sm, sk, and go. Then read up the ladder, Golsk, Smper, Dur, and Sol. Now can you think of any words that begin with a soul sound? Sleep, slip, slap. And they have fun making up those words, and that's something that also you can do at home with them. Give them a blend and see how many words they can come up with. So I am going to give you a blend. I'm going to also set a timer for one minute. I would like you to write down or think of as many words as you can with a bowl, B-L in bowl. All right, go ahead and just shout out some of the words you came up with, if anyone has one. Blend. Good. Blend. <laughs> Yay. Bless. Ooh, Blessing. good one. Blend. 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 <laughs> See, this can be very fun, very fun, and then also can build their vocabulary and just get good skills to develop. So, another strategy or thing that you can make at home is a flip book. So I just took one of those card, note card things that have the spiral on it, cut it in half, and then you put the beginning ones on one side, a vowel, and the end ones on the other side, and then you have nonsense words, like Sam was showing you, but now with blends. So we have blant, plant, flaunt, <laughs> glant, and then that's when they are ready. They've done the beginning blends independently, they've done the end blends, and now they're ready to put it all together. Just one more quick activity you can do too is focusing on one sound at a time at the end, op, 
and then putting different blends in the front so they're only worried about one at a time in case they are struggling. All right. Oh, one second. <laughs> so let's say I wanted to do on the whiteboard an activity with them, and I would write flip on the board. Um, so Sam, what can you do? Can I can underline the letter that makes the vowel sound. What did you underline? I inch it. How many sounds does it have? Well, it four. Four. So I'm going to make four boxes. Can you show me where the vowel sound is? Is it first, second, third, or fourth? It's over here. Oh, it's third. And the rest, we have our consonants. Let's try another one. I'm going to underline the letter that makes the vowel sound. What did you underline? A, apple, a. How many sounds does it have? Ooh, a, ooh. Four. Four again. Let's make four bars. Show me where it is. First, second, third, or fourth. The second box. Oh, so you see the vowel moves. There's one consonant here and two consonants down at the end. So they have fun um, seeing where the vowel is in the word and where the different consonants fall to. A good visual tool for them. Um, still, believe it or not, in the beginning of first grade, we are busy. The next thing we'll do is we'll introduce the long vowel sounds. And so we'll start by recognizing that our vowel letters, like E, A, U, make two sounds. We have songs for that too to help us. I'll sing just a part of one for you. A makes two sounds, A makes two sounds, A and F, A and F. As I'm doing that, I'm making my arms go long for the A sound and short for the F sound. Just another great tool for them to have. And once we do that, we're going to show them something called our friend silent E. So in kindergarten, remember we did consonant, vowel, consonant? Now we're going to say hello to our friend silent E. He is going to make some changes into our vowels and make them say a long sound. So in first grade, we'll look at words like bake, take, aid, and so on. And the way we teach our friends about this is another fun song. Everything in first grade is fun. <laughs> um, so we call it um, silent E. Silent E, silent E, at the end is where I'll be, but the vowel that I'm around gets to make its long, long sound. So let me show you that. I'm going to come up with a cake. As we sing that song in class, silent E, silent E, at the end is where I'll be, but the vowel that I'm around gets to say its long, long sound. So we may actually do an activity like that to show that E is not saying anything. Now A says A instead of A. Um, during this time, we'll also get to focus on blends again, like Dakota showed us, words like flake, having a blend and a long vowel sound. Um, during this time, also, we are not focusing on um, A-C-E or I-C-E yet, because that's when C changes things and makes a different sound for us, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, a great way to teach them the difference between our short sounds and long sounds is something to co just help me out with. Let's all read the short vowel sounds because we all paid attention to the first slide. Let's read. Ah, great. But well, finally, E's going to come out more bossy since he wants to change some things. And he's going to change all of our words. You can do this with a different color and have your, maybe have your students write it themselves. Now they can see that cat now says. Tim now says time. Hut now says you. So just a couple more tools for you guys there. Okay, so there's another vowel rule that we will teach them. And another chant. We say it with two vowels go walking. The first one does the talking. And the second one, the first one says its name, and the second one is silent. So, for example, they will know, and we explicitly teach them, that O 
A, the, says, oh. So try that with me. Oh, a, the, oh. Um, so that is training them now to look ahead in a word, to chunk it together, making sure they pay attention to know that now there's two vowels instead of one, and when certain letters are together, the sound can change. So then that's when we can also add an element to our dots that I was doing on the board earlier. Where if I had ho, then bam, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna underline the letters that make the vowel sound. What did you underline? O, A, vote, O. Very good, can you sound out for me? O, T. How many sound? Three. Maybe three, but I'm counting one, two, three, four letters. A doesn't say anything. Oh, oh, and A, <laughs> one, zero. Can you show me if that's in the beginning, the middle, or the end? In the middle. Oh, very good. And the, con the consonant's protected. So at, in first grade at this point, they know how to read this, but we're not necessarily having them spell it yet. That comes later in first grade. Right and because we have them read it, because the program that we use to teach them their phonics sounds, primary phonics books, they will have those show up all the time. And so we're training them to look ahead and find those that when two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. <laughs> So parents, it's your turn again. I'm gonna make someone do one. <laughs> Raise your hand, baby. Anybody? Yay, Mrs. Elby, you're the best. Here it is. You can have the keyword on the board. So E, double E, or E. So you'll spell it twice. E, E, beat, E. Perfect, everybody. E, E, beat, E. Great, she gets her own stuff. Because now, whenever students see this ED, they have something in their mind, the word E. So when they're reading a new word, like say it's the word sleep, and they're stuck, you can remind them, oh, it's the same sound you hear in feet. Now we're in October of first grade, and we get to do digraphs, ch, sh, and th, and we have songs for this and keywords for all those sounds. And again, they're chunking, they're not saying k, h, because that wouldn't make any sense if in a word like chair. Um, and then CK at the end of the word. CK always goes with a short vowel. It doesn't say duck. It just says duck. Um, and then a rule that I didn't know before I came to Trinity was when do we use a K and when do we use a C for the K sound? In a word. So if you have a K, or a C. We know that K takes I and E. C takes the other three. A, O, U. So we have um, a kid or kite, cat, coat, cut. The hard C sound is the K sound. Um, if C breaks the rule and C is before an E, like in ice, then C, bossy E, makes it say the S sound. Because E, like we know, is a bossy letter. So we also like to make up some silly stories with our words. So um, they eventually learned that OR and AR and OO come before K2. K is a big, strong letter like in the word book. K likes to be on the end to protect the rest of the letters. He's going to be the protector. C, oh, look how tiny he is. He's not a very good protector. <laughs> so K is going to protect the letter from its enemy. And then if um, we got into more specifics, we could say a word like fork. Oh, there's K again, being the protector. He likes to be at the end of OR. If we did C, C doesn't like that. He's too small and scary. He needs a protector himself. E comes along. And E now is bossy and makes him say, so that's why now we have a word like force. And then our star.
Star Wars lovers love that. Yes. <laughs> you know how to spell force and may the force be with you. Um, so just, you can make up stories with spelling and with reading to help them when, when they come across a tricky word. Yeah, so making up your own stories is the best. I have a silly one too. <laughs> And this is something I made up one day in class by myself. So parents, if I can do it, you can do it too. My friend, Q, when I see him, sometimes I'm tempted to say, uh, right? I want to make this two sounds because I see two letters. But to help the kids remember that there's just one sound, we'll say that Q is shy. He's afraid to go somewhere by himself, so his buddy U needs to be with him. U is brave. He can make his own sound in another word, but Q cannot be there unless he was there to be, help him be brave and tough. Unless you're a Scrabble player. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Anyways, we also have a couple more tools over there that can show that. Um, so as the year continues, we are going to introduce what we call special vowel sounds. So we have sounds like AR, which says R, AI, and AY that say A, and then all these fun ones down there. Ang, ing, ong, ong, ang, ing, ong, ong. Kids love when you stand fast like that. Mm -hmm. When we start learning these special um, words that are chunked together, uh, it's a great time to start talking about um, two syllable words, like Mrs. Um, Ella showed us earlier with our chin. We can practice those again. Another simple way, too, is simply to clap them. Whenever you hear a vowel sound, you're going to clap. If you see a vowel sound, you'll clap. Um, also, another great uh, another great tool we have for that uh, on the side on your way out, please take a look. Is um, highlighting the special sounds like you saw me do earlier. I'm going to underline the letters that make the vowel sound. Finding a r in a word and underlining is a great way to get my brain ready to keep it together. We have a few examples over there, and actually later today you're going to get to try that too. Um, great. So she has a market on the board. Um, before she starts her square check, can we all clap it? Do you see two vowel sounds? So let's hear the two vowel sounds. Here we go. Great. That's a no supply and hands trick for you. All right. Sam, what are you going to do? Underline the letters that makes the vowel sound. A R star R E elephant X. Ooh, I see that you underline two. Very good. Does that mean it has two syllables? Yeah. Mark it. Mark it. Can you tell me the names of the vowel sounds? A R and E. Very good. How many sounds? Mm. R, K, F, five. Oh my goodness. Show me where the vowel sounds are. One here, and one up here. Very good. And the consonants are fillers in between. So for our struggling students who are having trouble seeing the second syllable, this is a great strategy for them. Um, also during this time when we are showing off our new vowel friends and sounds like ang and ing, um, Ella Sings Jazz is a book we read in the very first week of first grade. A lot of parents, you might remember having to read this for your student. Um, we reintroduced this when we taught the ang and ing song sounds, and the kids were so encouraged to see that they could read it quickly and efficiently by chunking the sounds together now that they had the tools. All right, do we have a great volunteer to tell me this? Spell it for me, this sound right here. Anyone with our phonics speakers? This is Garcia, do you remember how to do it? Dakota showed us 
and just in case they are having trouble seeing that bossy E, we have another strategy. Just remember, you see, send, we have more keywords there. The soft G sound, and my favorite, the silent E syllable, L, E. It's great because it helps those syllables again, like little, bottle, little. Um, and with those, it's great because we can um, start having students recognize that if the consonant is doubled, it's because it comes before a short vowel. So just another great tool to introduce during this time. <laughs> We're also going to continue working with our red flag words. And also contractions. We spend time telling the kids that don't means do not. And we focus a lot on this during our grammar times too, having them go from do not to don't and don't to do not. <laughs> Okay, so this week in particular, in first grade, we just did the two sounds that say oi. So we know o, o, y, boy, oi. And we also know o, i, oil, oi. And they were doing great at words like toy, boy, soy, joy. And they were doing great at words like soil, boil, where they had some tricky words were wanted to challenge them, so I gave them words like choice, where they had to recognize the soft C as well, and I gave them words like destroy, and if they were having trouble recognizing the, the chunks at the end, the O-Y at the end, I would cover, and we go with that says E as in me, so D, oh, and then I see a blend, stir, and then I see O-Y at the end. So getting them this challenge really showed um, me, who was guessing, who was um, struggling to see the different syllables in the word. And so um, just going through this process with them and covering was um, really helpful to them. And then we could also talk about, um, put it in a sentence and um, expand their vocabulary that way, or enjoy. Yeah, in just a few minutes, you guys are going to get a chance to look for some OI words yourself. And again, just another big word like this, maybe we wouldn't expect our kindergarten first graders to read it, but they can. If they can find the vowel sounds, they can make the sounds, put them together, and read just about anything. So I'm going to come around and bring this paper to you out to go with this. Yes, so we have a um, reading passage for you called Troy and His Toys. Your job is to take a highlighter, a pen, highlight, circle, all the O, I, OI, and O, Y sounds that you see. And we have counted how many there are, and we want you to find all of them and tell us how many finding them. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't enough time. Does anybody want to take a, a chance at looking for some OI words? Yeah, I'll go Waited, 
played, strayed, thanked, looked, and jumped. So sometimes when they're reading, they want to say, I look ed, but that doesn't make sense. What would you say? You would say, I looked out the window. Oh, ED made the t sound. So training their brains to know that sometimes it makes a silly sound. And there's also a fun rule with suffixes. If you have the word ha, and you want it to say ha in and add the doing suffix to it, you have to double the consonant to keep the vowel short. And you have to have two Otherwise, if you just had one, the vowel would be long and say, oh, ho -ing. Same thing with tap. If you want to keep the vowel short, you double the consonant to keep the vowel short. tap -ing. If you only had one key, it would say taping, and the vowel would be long. So um, that's where we end off with first grade. And then we end up, sorry. Oh, yeah. um, bring their attention to that. If you do see them read this word as hoping, like, oh, how many keys did you see? Bring their attention to it and let them make that correction on their own because they can. Yes. Great. Um, before we let you read tonight, I'm just going to give you some great words of advice for your early reader. Practice, practice, practice. That is the best thing you can be doing in these early years is having your child read to you as often as they want to or don't want to. <laughs> when you are reading to them, don't just give them the word, like I said. Have them sound it out. Have them make an educated guess with the tools that they have learned. Don't make them, don't let them do a random guess. They have way too much knowledge to just do a random guess. Um, a lot of times it's a good idea to pick a book that um, has a topic that interests your child. Star Wars books are everywhere right now. If your kid likes animals, pick a book about animals. Get them interested. Um, each night, we would love it, ask for it. You guys would read at least 10 minutes a night with your child. I would say that means Saturdays and Sundays, too. Make it a fun family event. Get cozy in your blankets. Read to the family dog. Just make reading a part of your routine. Um, you could set a timer. And then maybe your kid is tired. You can read, but as you're reading, maybe pause and let them finish the sentence. Like, God said, let there be. Point to it. Let them read the word light. Um, because remember, when you're reading to them, you're help doing another important part of reading. You're helping model fluency. They're going to hear how it sounds. You can play with your tone and your expression. Um, they'll, that's how they hear how N marks sound. So when you're modeling that, it's a great way for them to absorb that and then encourage them to do it too. If they read a sentence and there's an exclamation mark, make them go back and sound excited when they read that. <laughs> There's a few um, books that would be helpful for you to read, and on Trinity's website, there is a link you can click, and every grade level has a suggested reading list. These are some we got from Mrs. Gray in second grade. There's actually a stack of them on the filing cabinet, so you can see what a second grader would be reading. And that's it. So uh, we thank you so very much for coming tonight and hearing our, our little spiel. Things were cute. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of information you guys got tonight. Um, so as it seems in, if you have questions, please feel free to email us. We'll, we'll gladly answer them. If you see a manipulative you like or a strategy you want more help with, email us. We'll send it to you. We'll help you get it because um, we're all a team here, and we just want to help our kids be the best readers that they can be. Uh, thank you.